Perfect Blue is Satoshi Kon's directorial debut. The story is based off a novel called Complete Metamorphosis, by Yoshikazu Takeuchi. It was originally supposed to be a live-action movie. However the Kobe earthquake in 1995 cut down the budget and it was decided to release it as an anime feature. Animated by Madhouse Studio. This actually turned out to be a good thing as it helped Satoshi Kon develop his unique editing style which he would continue to master in his other movies. Satoshi Kon's editing style is too broad to discuss in this video so I will simply focus on the types of cuts he uses in this style. These are, cutting on action, where a cut is placed in between motion. And the motion in first shot is completed by the next shot. For example the motion of the little girl towards right is continued by the ghost. Second, the match cut. Here the visuals in one shot are matched by the following shot and finally walk by transition, as shown in this example. Excuse me, who are you? He also uses panning out of a television quite often, but it can be considered as a type of match cut. I will just refer to these cuts as special cuts for the sake of simplicity. Usually filmmakers try to keep the use of these special cuts to a minimum because even though they look cool as hell, they are always noticeable and draw the viewer's attention out from the movie thereby keeping the audience from immersing fully in the movie. However, a completely different thing happens in the case of Perfect Blue. Let's divide the 80-minute movie into first and second half. And while the second half has a lot more of these special cuts the first half also has its fair share of these cuts. The special cuts in first half of the movie serve as a time-efficient way of introducing the character of Mima, for example the starting performance of the cam group intercuts between Mima doing her everyday activities thus allowing us to become familiar with Mima both as being a pop idol and as a normal person in just a matter of minutes. The presence of these special cuts allows the movie to be shorter and have fewer dialogues. On first glance this seems to be the only purpose of these cuts in the first half but they also serve another purpose, but before that let's discuss the use of special cuts in second half. One of the main reason Perfect Blue's twist works so nicely is that up until this time the viewers are just as confused as the protagonist Mima, and the special cuts in second half do exactly that. They confuse the viewer to the point that the viewer does not understand what is real and what is dream but not beyond that. Thus, putting us essentially into Mima's shoes, and in a way experiencing the movie through character's perspective. In my opinion however, if these special cuts were only present in the second half of the movie the final work would not have been nearly as good. This is because if Satoshi Kon had used special cuts only in the last half of the film then it would have made the movie feel kind of discontinuous and weird. The audience would have got overwhelmingly confused due to the fast and jarring cuts and the twist would not have been as satisfying. So instead Satoshi Kon uses these special cuts throughout the runtime of the movie, making us familiar with this editing style and allowing us time to understand the narrative. But when we finally feel to be quite familiar with this editing style he turns us upside down by repeatedly using the Mima waking up from dream shot and also increasing the frequency of special cuts thereby confusing the viewer not by the overwhelming nature of the special cuts but by the ambiguity created in the narrative as a result. Which basically makes the twist all the more satisfying.